Ah, Kirk, my old friend. Do you know the Klingon proverb which tells us revenge is a dish that is best served cold? It is very cold in space. Here's your look at the new Playmates Toys classic Star Trek movie series, Star Trek The Wrath of Khan, Khan, Nooney, and Singh. Seeking vengeance on James T. Kirk's superhuman tyrant Khan hijacks a starship, steals the Genesis device, and sets a deadly trap for the crew of the Enterprise. He tasks me. He tasks me, and I shall have him. I'll chase him around the moons of Nibia and around the Antares maelstrom and round Partition's flames before I give him up. Still always a line I remember from Wrath of Khan, one of the best Star Trek films. You can argue me down below, but you'll lose. The all-time best Star Trek film is still Wrath of Khan. Before we get a closer look at Mr. Nooney and Singh here, uh, Khan stands about four and a half inches in height, or the figure's about 12 centimeters tall. I'd like to as well thank the folks over at Playmates Toys that did provide this sample, the classic Star Trek Khan. Then we could have a look at this review. I'm going to refrain from doing the obvious thing in this review. Just know I thought of it, though. Before then, actually, we get a closer look at the figure and all his accessories. I want to actually bring a couple of figures in for comparisons. Here's what he looks like next to Captain Kirk. Ah, uh, Kirk. Here's what he also looks like next to Spock, who Spock looks like he's been grabbing burnt cookies from the oven. If you haven't watched my review of Spock, do give that a check if you have a chance. But in this case, you can see that Khan is about the same size as Kirk. He's about a, just a little bit taller, just a hair bit taller, as crazy as that hair may be, than Spock on the side. Collected with Khan, you get the following accessories. First, the figure gets a standard issue, providing I can actually pick it up, a standard issued Starfleet display stand. It's the same stand that we've gotten with all the other figures thus far, and I can't see them changing it anytime soon. While the bottom of it doesn't serve any purpose, the top at least does have that peg that can attach to either one of Nooney and Singh's feet. The figure does have two peg holes on the undersides of his feet, as shown here, but he only has one peg hole, one peg, so you're going to have to choose which feet to attach it to. One thing I did want to mention, though, about the display stand and about the peg placement is while they have placed it somewhat centered, if center would be probably a little more over this way, I feel like it would have also served a better purpose to have the peg moved over over here. And why I say that, if the peg was right there where I'm pointing at it, where I'm pointing at it, then you could actually have Khan in a centered section of that stand. By where they've actually put the peg, when you attach, I'm going to go with this peg right, uh, this hole right here. When you attach Khan's feet to it, you either have to have his feet really close together, so at least he's still on top of the stand. If you do want to give him a wider stance though, then it looks like one foot is a little off keltered, like he wants to slip off the side of it. Again, I wish that the peg was a little bit more over to the corner, so that Khan would be a little more centered in the stand. A big deal breaker? No, it isn't. I know we're just only talking about display stands. What we should really, though, be talking about is the rest of the accessories that come included with the con. We're going to just put this to the side for right now. The figure comes included with the Genesis control box. Of course, Khan does steal this and threatens to detonate the Genesis device. It's all, again, using that same gray plastic. You see a lot more, though, of the marbling in the plastic by just the way it's been cast in the press. The bottom of it, hello, Hello is very empty, very hollow, like the barren emptiness of space. And while the front is really the part you're going to be wanting to most look at, it's decently detailed. It doesn't really have any sticker application. It doesn't have any paint applications either. But again, if this line is supposed to be heavily influenced by a retro line that Playmates done back in the day, I don't feel like it necessarily needs. The appeal of it, the charm of it, is the fact that there is no sticker application. There's no paint applications. It's just a molded accessory. And move that to the side. Uh, off to one other thing that the figure comes included with before we kind of get to the more gruesome things. The figure comes included with the phaser. Once again, standard issue for Starfleet. I have to bring one in. This wasn't, actually, Khan doesn't get two of these, but I didn't want to bring in the one that came included with Kirk. So you can see that they are exactly the same phaser to one another. One doesn't have, I couldn't necessarily even say one has a K and one doesn't have a K because they both are Khan and Kirk. But you can see, like, just looking at it, you would not be able to tell which one is which. The phaser does fit into either one of his hands. 
just to show you here. The gloved hand I find fits the best. It does sit grand on an angle, but at least you can twist the hand around. You can also fit it into this hand, but this hand I find doesn't sit and hold the phaser as well. Although right now it does look like it's doing a better job. The other thing the figure comes included with as well, something frequently I looked away at when watching as a kid. He comes included with a bowl of steady eels. More of the infants that he's actually yanking from the crevices of the adult. He actually takes the tool right here that is basically looks like something you'd expect from a barbecue kit. Although you probably wouldn't want to be using this to be barbecuing anything on the grill. But he actually does take this hook tool, this little claw, and he separates out the shell of the adult and pulls out the tiny little infants and he puts them in this tiny little dish. It's probably for a good reason that this isn't actually colored differently than the rest of the bowl. It would make it even more gruesome. But he basically just takes these, drops them inside the helmets, and proceeds to put it on top of the two crew members that he's confiscated. One of which being Chekhov. I don't want to say hilarity ensues. Hilarity does not ensue, neither for Chekhov nor the viewing audience. Now, you can take these and put them into his hand, not though well. The tool that he actually uses is the easier of the two to actually get into his hand, as I proceed to do it, or best I can do it to do it right now. It does fit into his hand. And then the bowl, you, so, you sort of have to take the, the bottom of the bowl and kind of wedge it in between the thumb and his fingers. And sometimes you think you do a better job than others. It's the luck of the draw, really. I kind of have it like that. Oh, see, I just, dro I just dropped it. It's whereabouts unknown. But you can't fit it into his hand. I think I can see it. It's down there. But he actually then takes it, and of course he pulls one out at a time and proceeds to drop it inside the helmet. Love the fact that they would have included those accessories. Although I'm now looking for the... Jeez, I, I hope these eels aren't loose. Those are the accessories, though, that come included with Khan either way. Let's get a closer look, though, at the figure itself. Can I just say, not only does it bear a good, strong likeness to Ricardo Montalban, I just find any chance I can get to say Ricardo Montalban, but I think it's actually one of the best sculpted figures we've gotten so far from the Star Trek license. Just to give you a comparison, what I thought to be the better of the figures between him and Kirk, Spock, I think doesn't look as good as Khan. Granted, different figures, but I think Khan bears a better, stronger likeness to the way he looks in the movie. And then to compare him, of course, with his nemesis, Kirk's features were a little bit more smoother, if still that makes any sense to you at all. Khan's features, I think, look a lot more like the character. I mean, even from all the sides, I think it really does look a lot like Khan himself. Just to move Kirk out of the way here. He's a very muscular fellow. It was accused of him at one point that he was actually using a prosthetic piece. Montalban was quick to step up and say that that was not a prosthetic piece. That was pure Khan. But as you can see, he's a very muscular guy. Not only is the face sculpted well, he's got the crazy looking hairstyle there, longer hair in the back. Even though his hair is longer, apparently he still shaved. Even though he was he was just a, abandoned in City Alpha. Was it City Alpha 5 or City Alpha 6? City Alpha 5, I think, was where he was abandoned. But you can see like some decent detailing done to his outfit here. I like the colors that they used here. He is generally short-sleeved, although he's kind of got ripped sleeves here on the one side. I guess more the way his outfit is, is designed. Uh, I really do like the way they've sculpted this. The paint is really good on this one as well. Now, again, these figures are a little bit more limited side when it comes to the articulation. One thing Khan does lack in, he doesn't have articulation in the waist, which is one thing you have to sacrifice a bit from this line. But considering how far we've gone from the Playmates Star Trek line from the 90s, it's crazy the fact they were able to put as much articulation in as they did. For the articulation, though, on Khan, despite having his long locks of gray, the figure can still rotate his head back and forth, up, down, and slightly back and forth. I know for a second it seemed like he missed it. <laughs> he didn't miss anything. That's as far down as his head can really go. That's as far up as his head can really go. And the same can be said for rocking it back and forth. Not really much at all. His arms, though, can go way past 90 degrees, though. And you can still take the arms and rotate them all the way around. All the way around. The figure does possess a, a bicep or elbow hinge just below the bicep, but does allow the form to rotate back and forth. Hands also do rotate all the way around. Again, he doesn't have any articulation in the waist, but I mean, for how good the sculpted torso is, pure con. I don't mind the fact he doesn't have a waist swivel cut. Legs do split, though. You can take the legs and move forward and back. Uh, there's a mild swivel at the top of the thigh. 
a single hinge on the knee, but also allows the lower leg to rotate. And the figure also has some toe articulation or foot articulation on con. Jeez, I really hope those steady eels haven't gotten loose. And oh, wait, I think one's crawling up my shoulder right now. Maybe if I whisper, it may not get startled and crawl into my ear. Either way, though, I really like the look of Khan. Of the movie tied-in characters that we've gotten so far from Playmates Toys, I think Khan is the strongest, of Sculpt at least. Then maybe then maybe Spock, then maybe Kirk. I don't know whether we are going to be getting anything more tied into Wrath of Khan. I certainly hope we do. Maybe at least Chekhov. Chekhov, throw that in there with his spacesuit. Even put one of the little SETI eels as something that was molded on the inside. I'm getting ahead of myself. Getting ahead of myself. But though what we have gotten from Playmates Toys, I feel at least Khan is superior. As if you were to ask him, he probably would agree with you. Confirming some of the comments, I'm sure, down below about Khan, it was City Alpha 5. Because, of course, we all remember that City Alpha 6, the neighboring planet, is the thing that blows up six months after the crew of the Botany Bay is left behind, stranded on the planet. Although Kirk thought he was doing a good deed, it ended up just being the death sentence for many of the crew of the Botany Bay and all the reasoning why Khan seeks revenge in the first place. On to final looks, though, of the figure. While I don't have them actually displayed right now with the bowl of SETI eels, the SETI eels' whereabouts still remain unknown. Although for a moment I felt that something was crawling up my arm. It ended up just being a fly. But it could have been a SETI eel. And if it had been a SETI eel, my quick reflexes would have prevented me from being a mindless zombie. Uh, of course, growing slowly into the state of insanity. Anyways, though, SETI eels aside, I've actually got him, the figure displayed here with the type phaser in his hand. He does also come included with the Genesis control box, but just by its size and clunkiness, it's impossible, of course, to have the figure displayed with it in his hand. Not that you really would want, why would you want to be displaying Khan with the control box of Genesis in his hand anyways? No, 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 that's going to be sitting on the shelf along with Khan. I feel Khan is the best figure we've gotten from the Starship Star Trek line. But Playmates Toys, at least Wrath of Khan. I'm not going to put in the category of next generation, but at least of the Wrath of Khan, between Kirk, Spock, and Khan, I think Khan is the superior figure. I mean, if you were to ask him anyways, he would only just say he's the superior human. It actually translates also to a superior figure of the three. What do you guys think of the best? What did you think the best figure was so far from what we've seen? Now, again, we only have three figures from Wrath of Khan. I am hoping at some point that we are going to be getting a couple more. Maybe, if anything, uh, Chekhov. Give us Chekhov in the spacesuit. And you can even put the touch of detail by a little tiny SETI eel on the visor of his helmet. What a gruesome sight that was. A big thank you once again to the folks, though, at Playmates Toys that did provide this sample of the classic Star Trek Wrath of Khan, Khan. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And as well, you can also let me know what's your favorite Star Trek film. I didn't want to put too much pressure at the beginning of this video saying that Wrath of Khan was the superior Star Trek. If you think a Star Trek film was better than Khan, go, go at it. Feel free to let me know down below in the comments section. But if you enjoyed this video, hit it with a like. If you love the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more Star Trek, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.